Welcome to Bird Life FM. It's like radio, only awesome. Give it up for your hosts, Cause and Goldie. Hey, this is Kaz, and you are listening to another edition of Berg Life FM. I wish Goldie could be here, but she had something come up, so I was pretty lucky to score some sweet last-minute co-hosts. I'd like you all to give a warm welcome and say hello to Kista and Gorge. What's up? Hello! Hey, guys. Thanks for joining me today. How are you doing? We're good. How are you? Good. So we have some fun stuff lined up. We also later in the show have an awesome interview with Anthony Vergara from the Pittsburgh Riverhound. So we're really excited about that. We'll get to that in a little bit. But I wanted to talk to these guys about a few topics that we have come up with. So you guys ready? Yeah. Nice. All right. So let's start with, I think we should do this one because, all right. So Keista and Gorge have listened to a bunch of the Berg Life FM shows before and they like a lot of different things from it. So the one thing they really liked was our Urban Dictionary game that Goldie and I did. So they asked if we could do that, and I said, sure, let's do it. The thing is, I wasn't going to let them get onto Urban Dictionary because, obviously, they're going to be 12 and 10. So, you know, that's not an appropriate site for anyone under the age of really probably 30. But I did find some really good age-appropriate words that I will be quizzing them on. So let's start with that, guys. Sound good? Yeah, let's do this. Okay, so the first word. Now, I'm... I'm going to read the word and you have to guess what the definition is, okay? Okay. Got it. The first word is, or phrase, is Thanksgiving pants. Probably like really ugly pants or something. Uh, (laughs) Gorge. uh, Holiday pants? Uh, All right, let's kind of break it down. So what do you do at Thanksgiving? Wear pants. There you go. Gorge got that one. So when you eat a ton... You probably need what kind of pants? Big fat pants. <laughs> That's right. Oh my gosh. So pants that are worn <laughs> in anticipation of eating a huge meal. Oh my gosh. Got it? Yep. That's good. Okay. Here's another one that I really like the idea. I think we're going to do this coming Christmas, okay? It's called de-gifting. Taking away gifts? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, it's a mutual agreement to suspend holiday gifts for at least one season, usually within a single family or circle of friends. Because really, who needs an Xbox or an Xbox game? This <laughs> or, guy right here. Come Kista on. Or who needs that. arts and craft kits and Aww. things like that? Or, Never nah. in your life never we'll see kind of made up my mind but we'll see. no i'm kidding i Yay. wouldn't do that to you guys Yay. of course you wouldn't all right the next one is xbox widow oh i know this one a person who had an xbox but had it destroyed broken or something that made it will die good try again not uh, quite though gorge a widow who plays on the xbox good try as well but both of you are wrong. Oh, dang it. These are hard. These are hard, but you guys did a good job. Mm-hmm. And maybe you can make up your own definitions that then qualify for those words. But this is the official Urban Dictionary one. A girl whose boyfriend spends so much time playing Xbox instead of paying attention to her that she feels like a widow. <laughs> oh, man. So, what do you think? Awesome. Very good. All right, good deal. All right, so we also wanted to talk about the River Hounds because we've been to a game, right? Oh, uh, yep. yeah, that was a really fun game. We got to go on the field to get autographs. Yeah, that was pretty cool, huh? Yeah, yep. and in the same game, probably like an hour earlier, a River Hounds player kicked the ball and the train was coming by. <laughs> the ball hit the train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. And there was a movie clip wherever yeah. the boy yells train. I didn't see the movie. My parents told me that, so... Yeah, stand by me. That was a good one. So we had a blast at the game. We also got a free baseball cap, remember, that had river hounds on it? Yep. Yeah. That was a cool hat. A nice dark gray hat with like three people's autographs on them. That's right. You guys got autographs on that. So it was a great time. So that's why I was excited to have them here so we could talk, which again, we'll get to in a little bit. Great stadium. Great view, right? I mean, you could see the whole city. No matter where you were sitting, great view anywhere i'm pretty sure you'd have a great view almost in every single seat yep okay another topic that i wanted to discuss we really talked about this goldie and i a few shows ago or maybe it was our last show actually and i wanted to get your perspective because i talked about when you guys were born but what was it like for you when you were born can you tell me that I don't remember george come on just remember it's not that long ago it was like 10 years that's a long 
time. <laughs> How about you, Keista? I remember. Tell us your first thoughts as soon as you came into the world. Why am I so darn cold? <laughs> oh, wait. You remembering now? It takes a little while to remember, right? Yeah. I thought, why aren't I in my mommy's stomach? Yeah, that's a good question. And what was it like in your mom's belly? Warm. <laughs> All right. Well, see, I just wanted to get your perspective because... Also, I was born on Kaz's birthday. That's right. I remember I mentioned that on the show. So he was born on my birthday. Gorge was born on a nice spring day. So... The second day. Of spring. That's right. All right, guys. Why don't you tell our listeners where we were yesterday and what we did? We were at the Dormont Pool, also near the Dormont Park. And instead of swimming, we were sled riding. And... Yeah, 40 degrees wasn't quite swimming weather yet not yet and these people made some ramps that were pretty fun yeah it was fun like there was this one ramp that was small that was really really hurtful and then there was this (laughs) other ramp that that was really fun which was longer yeah and i didn't do either ramp but i did plenty of sledding we got some great sleds that were really fast and we were just flying down that hill pretty much over the banks at the very bottom and lots of other people were there i remember going on this big ditch i didn't even know there was it until i went down yeah how about you kista well i also remember the first time i went down i thought that the sled was supposed to like make you lie down on your stomach so i went to like the very tallest hill i slid down on my stomach and i was going down so fast but there was like this little dip that made you go down and then a little bit back up again yeah, I was not a fan of the dip or that the hurts ditch, so whatever much. you want to call it. But everything else I loved. It was really slippery to get up. We were slipping. It was. We couldn't get up the hill the first time we went up because it was so slippery. But I'm telling you, if there's still snow on that hill and you're listening to this and you're near Dormont Pool, go over there right now with your sleds because we were there two and a half hours, right? Yep. And we took pictures and videos and I mean, the time flew by. So we had such a good time because it was warm enough that you weren't freezing and we were comfortable as we were walking up the hill a hundred times to go sledding and we didn't even wear snow pants or anything just regular pants that's right we were in our regular clothes plus hats and gloves but it was great all right well thanks again guys we'll get back to you in a little bit but let's get into the river hounds interview with anthony and we'll be right back yay All right, welcome to Berg Life FM. This is Kaz here with my guest co-host tonight, Ryan. And we're proud and happy to have Anthony Vergara here from the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. Welcome, Anthony. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thanks for stopping by. So we've got a few questions lined up for Anthony. And I'd say, Ryan, why don't you kick it off? Okay. The first game is a home opener at Highmark Stadium against Harrisburg City. I know you guys have been inside this whole time. How excited are you to get the season started and, you know, actually get on a field outside? Looking forward to it a lot. Been a not long preseason, but kind of like stuck inside. Just want to get outside and play a little bit. What have you guys done to kind of prepare for the season? What all goes through getting ready for that first game? A lot of preparation. Right now, the coaches just want to see how each one of us plays. So we've been playing a lot, doing a lot of uh, technical stuff, just uh, learning how to play with each other. You were just signed on full-time, what, in August? Is that right? Yeah, I got signed with four games left. Okay. And so previously, you played for the U23? Yeah, I played with them the whole summer. I saw that you attended Keystone Oaks in Seton LaSalle, which Mm -hmm. you know is like right in the backyard here of Dormont. So are you originally from the South Pittsburgh area? Yeah, I am. I grew up in uh, Green Tree. Oh, cool. And you went to Marshall. Mm -hmm. So you're back in the Berg. Yeah. (laughs) So when you were playing last season, did you go on any like away trips? Was there any place exciting that you guys went to or? Yeah, we uh, went up to Chicago. Okay. No, we got to walk in the stadium for a little bit, but we didn't get to play in it. We played in the field right outside, but it's still good. Yeah. Poking our heads in, seeing what the stadium was about. So this is your first full season. Is there any place you're excited to go or any team that you're really excited to play against? Or is it just new opponent, different day kind of thing? I'm excited for it all to be. 
yeah. uh, see everyone's stadiums and see the different opponents and get to grow as a player with uh, the team that we got. Yeah, that's great. So our listeners might not know this, but you're one of the only Pittsburgh natives on the current Riverhounds roster. So have you had a chance to show off the Berg to your teammates? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I'm working on it. Where would you take them then? Probably like, take them up Grandview. Mount Washington. For a little bit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a great place. How about any food that you're a big fan of here in the Berg? I'm a fan of Benihana, but oh, that's, nice. that's kind of everywhere, I think. Yeah, like. that is. But they probably speak with a Yinzer accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about Permanis or? Yeah, Permanis is good too. Take them down there for sure. Yeah. You have many players that have experience overseas. Yeah. Was there anything that you have learned from discussions about their overseas experience? And do you ever ponder, you know, in the future, maybe looking that way? Yeah, I think that would be one of the uh, things I'd like to do if I ever get the chance. All right. So if you weren't playing pro soccer, what would you be doing? Although you're like, playing? what, you're 23? Yeah. Me too. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. So, I mean, um, you're I mean, you're right out of college anyway. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't graduated yet, so I'm still working on that. Oh, okay. But I'd probably be working with my dad, remodeling houses with him stuff like that that kind of work nice i actually have some work for you here (laughs) i've recently read steve sakawani's 500 days where he comes back from a debilitating injury is there any time where you had to really overcome something to get where you're at today i went through a few injuries through college and through the pdl season with the under 23 team strained my hamstring a few times and uh rolled my ankle so it's just like battling through each one of those injuries was pretty tough and the whole college career was kind of tough with schoolwork and all the practice and trying to keep up with your friends so as we researched anthony before the show every picture it was kind of this trademark your hair was just pretty awesome i actually tried to grow it out for this show but it just didn't <laughs> the prenatal vitamins didn't work so <laughs> hair plugs <laughs> yeah i'll try that next time but anthony walked in and freshly cut well not freshly but much shorter hair now what's the story there it was just getting to be too much it would have been five years in december without getting a cut and it was just getting, wow getting, five years yeah, getting too much and just wanted to a fresh start it's a good it's way weird. to go i cut my own hair every two weeks so that's so do i it must be a yeah, cause thing. Be a <laughs> thing okay there's all types of soccer players you know there's players that away from the soccer field they're always watching soccer they eat live um, breathe soccer 24 7 and then there's some players like the queen's park rangers bobby samora who says he doesn't even like soccer it's just a job for him outside of soccer what do you do in your downtime yeah i've tried picking up a few activities after college because i realized like I'm not gonna be living with my friends anymore I've gotta find something to fill the time but picked up uh writing i read a little bit and tried painting here and there but i'm not very good at it no. well you should do like i used to be columbus crew season ticket holder and i i used to be in a fan section and we make tifosi just banners what's your favorite music trance or like uh, okay dubstep that kind hey, of that's, stuff i like electro yeah. trap so yeah yeah that's okay with me i saw a video of you juggling while at marshall how many hours in your lifetime do you think you've juggled to get that good at it uh, i don't even know a whole lot whenever i was younger we're redoing my house and the one room was just like just walls and mm-hmm. Through the winter, I would just juggle like all day, every day. So. Yeah, I usually go up on the beach at Lake Erie and I juggle up there, try to show yeah. off yeah. for the ladies. <laughs> no. beach How's that work out for you? Uh, it doesn't. <laughs> Not many people up there that interested in my soccer juggling skills. Well, how long can you juggle for, Anthony? Like at a time? Like do you um, keep count or is it a time? I don't know if I keep count. I just just like doing different moves, trying new stuff out. That I do. You think you could challenge? I am a former. He's pro been pro soccer player. I was <laughs> disappointed you actually didn't say I was your favorite pro soccer <laughs> player but i'll let it slide this time yeah, i i don't want to challenge we can have what, a little competition what, if you want what team did you play for that one in uh dayton okay. the, the dutch lines okay that, that yeah. one okay <laughs> All right, and now we have Ian Thompson joining us with the Riverhounds. Ian, welcome to Berg Life FM. Thank you. And thanks for joining us. So we wanted to get a little bit more into the Riverhounds in general and what's coming up this season. So can you give us any previews or any more information? Yeah, sure. I mean, we're, we're really hoping for an exciting season when the weather clears up. As Anthony was talking about earlier on, it's been quite difficult for the team. They've been locked indoors for the last few weeks. We're supposed to have played two preseason games by now, but um, we've just not been able to use the field so hopefully um you know in the, in the next few weeks we get some games that the team can get out there and uh, we get some fans who can who can come along to these games free of charge get a little bit of excitement going so we were hoping that on the 21st of march we're playing the university of charleston west virginia at highmark stadium okay. uh, the doors are open that night so we have a little passionate supporters group called the steel army that come along with the the tifo that, that ryan was talking about earlier <laughs> with their smoke bomb 
drums, their songs, their chants. So oh, I've they'll... seen them and heard them, and they're crazy in a good way. So they will be down that night. And then the week after that, March 28th, is when we kick off, officially kick off the new USL season against Harrisburg City Islanders. So it's an in state rivalry, it's the, the Keystone Derby. We play Harrisburg four times this season. So there's 28 games. So a big component of our success and their success is going to come down to these Derby games. Harrisburg got to the final last year. They've had the better of us, unfortunately, in the past few seasons. But if we can get off to a good start against them, then hopefully, you know, it augurs well for a good season. Great. Well, I'm excited. I've been to the stadium. I think it's an awesome place. The game was really exciting. And You said the first four out of the five games are at home. How important is it to just, you know, get off to a good start? Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, you know, I was a journalist covering the, yeah. the team last year. And I know that the last two years... Uh, they got off to a slow start. I think the the first seven games in the past two years, they they, they hadn't won any games. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we're always, from the start, just playing catch-up. And it seemed, I remember two years ago, that they hit a really great run of about 10 games undefeated. Yeah. But even despite that, they were still three points off the playoff zone. Mm-hmm. Um, and just fell a little bit short. And, and the same thing when Anthony was with the team last year where the same thing happened. Um, so of course the, this time around four of the first five games are at Highmark Stadium so if the team can get off to say you know three wins and a tie or, or, or better from that then we're not playing catch up we're the ones that other people yeah. are catching maybe Anthony can bring a bit more from the player side about you know how, how important it will be to get off to a good start this year yeah it's it's definitely important uh, it's always easier leading than chasing someone with points, but it's pretty important that we win uh, the majority of the games against Harrisburg there. I'm sure a lot of people listening now are going to be interested in getting to some games. Ian, can you give us a little more insight into how they do that? Sure. There are various options available if, if you want to purchase tickets. We have the season ticket package that gives you attendance to the 14 USL league games that we play. One US Open Cup game that we will host at Highmark Stadium, so that is a tournament and open to Major League Soccer, the North American Soccer League, the USL and below. It's like every level plays for this one championship. Very cool. Um, On top of that, our under-23 Professional Development League team that Anthony was part of last year, they play seven games at Highmark Stadium through the summer. Those games are are included in the season ticket package. They, uh, off the top of my head, I think you're you're looking somewhere in the $240 mark is for the premium midfield seat. Mm -hmm. And then it works down from there as you get further away from the halfway line our cheapest season ticket is a hundred dollars and that just allows you to come in and stand anywhere you like along the riverside or behind one of the goals we will have a standing section so uh no seat but here you can come in and have a beer and uh you know, get some whatever we'll have uh, in, our, in our new bar that we're building, some fish and chips or whatever, and watch the game. If you can't make it to all the games, we have three game plans, five game plans, seven game plans. So you can make a little package for when you know that you can come along. And also games, we have the single tickets for any game that you want to come along to. So best place if you want all this information and our schedule is riverhounds.com. We do have a new website, which we're going to be launching before the season starts. So, um, you know, moving to a new look. Or also you can can contact our box office at Highmark Stadium on 412-325-7241 and a ticket representative can help you. Like I said, I've been to Highmark. It is a great place to go. I highly recommend it to everyone. I've been there with family, friends. I mean, the bar alone is pretty awesome. Did you say you're renovating the bar? We are, yeah. So um, actually, our uh, good friends on the south side at uh, Piper's Pub, they're helping us to, uh, you know, they've been giving us some some ideas for the redesign. They are going to be helping us with our, our beer selections oh, and, nice. um, and I, I believe um, I think I'm right in saying that they might be even um, bringing along some fish and chips wow so it'd be like you're right at home right? so there yeah I'll be, sitting, I'll be sitting there then so yeah. there's that from Pipers there's a skyline view and now no pressure Anthony but the team that just needs to go out and win some games I guess all right, Anthony's got it and if you need my help I'm there all right, all right. my gosh great well again thanks guys really appreciate you both coming here and uh, looking forward to an excellent season. Best season so far, I'm sure. So Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again. And Ryan, of course, thanks for your co-hosting. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> 
All right, that should do it for episode seven of Berg Life FM. Thank you very much to Anthony and Ian from the Pittsburgh Riverhounds for stopping by. Thanks as well to Ryan for helping me interview. And thanks to Kista and Gorge for helping co-host, especially at the very last minute. Much appreciated. And thanks to you for listening. You can check out all of the previous Berg Life FM shows on iTunes, or if you go to berglife.com, you'll find them all there. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Hashtag goodbye. Peace out, Yinzers. Berg Life FM is a production of Berg Life. All rights reserved. For more information or to sign up for the Berg Life email list, visit berglife.com.